Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we are going to set up content filtering on a Synology router. So we've, we've done Unify. Now we're going to do Synology. I'm going to talk about why Synology is actually uh, my favorite when it comes to content filtering. And then we're going to do Grandstream and we'll do whatever else after that. But Let's head on over to the router and we'll get started and we'll talk about why I really, really like the Synology content filtering. All right, so here we are at our Synology router. If you go back a few videos uh, where we kind of did a base setup on this, this is the WRX version of the Synology router. I've got it sitting back here. You might not be able to see it, but if you remember, it made me change the username. I could no longer use admin, so... We're going to sign in with our super secret credentials, our lab credentials here. And once we're in, what we're going to do is we're going to use the safe access app. And this was, I can't remember if this was installed by default for some reason that I, I think it is. And there are other apps that are available. I'm just going to do a, a, a look over of these once. So if there's other packages you want me to talk about in other videos, so we've got VPN server plus. Threat prevention, download station, DNS server, media server, and radius server. If you want to see videos on any of those, let me know in the comments or shoot me a message. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to open safe access. And by default, you've got nothing in here. And what I really like about the Synology router is the way that they thought about how you can do the content filtering. And if you've got phones, whether it's iPhones or whether it's Android phones, you know, that you can do MAC address randomization. And a lot of this stuff is done by MAC address under the hood when you start looking at how these routers work. So what we can do with Synology is we can actually set a base for the entire network, right? This is the kind of content that the entire network is allowed to see by default. And you can restrict that. And then if you have devices that you want unrestricted, you can actually set a per device profile, right? So if I'm in control of the pro of the device, I'm probably not going to have Mac address randomization on, right? I am going to leave my Mac address alone so that the content filter doesn't affect me, right? So you can have your kids go in or whoever you're trying to content filter and they can monkey with all kinds of settings in there. And as long as you have that base layer at the network, they're going to have a difficult time really getting around that because the Synology router does then take control of all the DNS. It, it sees the DNS request going out and it takes control of all of that. It's, it's a really beautiful, very simple user interface that's doing a lot of stuff under the hood, right? So what we're going to do here is we're going to add our first profile. And you can see that it sees my PC. I'm the only thing plugged into it at the moment. I actually have dual NICs, so I'll have to disable my other uh, network card to show you that this does work. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a profile. It's going to walk us through this wizard. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a network profile. And we're going to go next. It's going to ask us which network we're going to apply this to. You're probably going to want to apply it to your guest network. When I set this router up, I did set up the guest network. You don't have to have a guest network, but this is why we're being just prompted with which network do you want to do this on? So I'm going to do primary network. It's going to continue the wizard here eventually. Okay, so now it's, it's going to show you what devices it sees on that network when you start setting this up. We can look at setting access rules here. Now, I should have, I should have, I should have continued that. I didn't, if you didn't, what we can do is we can edit this. Within this edit list, we can turn internet on and off at specified times. Here's our web filter. We're going to turn this on. And Synology knows that I, iCloud has a private relay. So they're going to go ahead and block that by default, because if the iCloud private relay is enabled on an iOS device, it can completely bypass any network protections that you have. So they went ahead 
and they turn that on by default. And I really like that. So here we get some basic settings. Is this network for a child? So it's going to prevent children from accessing adult and illegal sites. Is this employees? Prevent employees from accessing chat software and social networks to improve employee productivity. Or is this a guest? So we're going to prevent guests from accessing illegal websites, or we can do custom. And we can also do a detailed timetable, right? We can turn these filters on and off at certain times. So as with anything, the crux of anything, the crux of any problem with anything technology is always people, right? So you have to figure out how to, how to manage your people along with the technology. This makes it a lot easier. So we're just going to say that this is child. Real quick, though, let's look at this custom. So we can go in here and we can add all kinds of, of different things to this block list. And we'll just say test block. And the action is going to be block. And that's going to ask us which categories. So we can say adult, chat, drugs, hacking, remote control. We'll leave sports open, advertising. And it tells you here that there's so likely so many things that it'll block in advertising. That's not even going to show up in the logs. Dangerous materials, gambling, violence, dating, redirection, Juarez, which is illegal software, and we'll block social networks. So basically, we've left sports, multimedia, shopping, games, and cartoons open. Then we can add custom domains to block. So this is our base our base filter for the network. So, and we can also go back to child, but we'll leave it here. Safe search, we can force safe search. It's going to let us know again that iCloud private rel relay has been disabled. YouTube, we'll put strict mode on there. We're going to force the safe search on all of the other popular search engines. Under advanced, we've got that block iCloud private relay. We're going to click OK. So now we have our base, our base network. And what I'm going to do real quick is I'm actually going to disable my other network adapter so that we have to force, we have to force all the traffic through the Synology router. So I'm disabling the uplink here to my other network. So now all of my traffic from this PC is going through this web filter. You can do a couple other cool things. You can do an access request. So if somebody tries to go to a site and they don't, or if they try to go to a site and they get blocked, you can, they can request it to be unblocked and you can accept or reject that. Here are the settings, allow users to request access. Uh, by default, it allows that block page style. You can actually come in here and completely customize your block page. So here we can say you've reached the end of your road. Follow the yellow brick road to find the man behind the curtain. You can have a background image. We'll apply that. We'll see what that looks like. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open a new tab in the web browser, and I'm going to try to get to something that should be listed as an adult site. So let's open a new tab. And let's see what happens here. So I tried to go to playboy.com and you can see that I get the block page here. And I can submit a request here. If I think that I want to go to that site, I can hit submit. And when I go back here, I can go to the access request and you can see that this has been requested. I'm going to reject that request. So it, it works. Now, let's say that I need to create a profile to get around the web filter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click profile, add a profile. I'm going to add a user profile. I'm going to go next. You can upload a photo of the person. 
I'm just gonna call this this Willy. I'm gonna say next. And then it's gonna ask me which device or devices need to get around that base network filtering that we've set up. I'm gonna click WH main PC. I'm gonna hit create. But what it's gonna do is it's going to allow me to fine tune that. So I'm gonna go down here to the user profile and you can see I can set up the time code of the internet schedule. I can pause all restrictions for that device. I'm gonna edit this. And what I'm gonna do for the web filter is I'm going to leave the web filter off, which is going to allow this device to get to any, any website. We're not filtering at all. I'm going to leave safe search off. I'm going to leave the advanced settings off for that device, the internet schedule, nothing. This device now has absolutely no restrictions. So if I open this other tab and I refresh it, then you can see that that website is going to load. So that's one of the reasons that I really, really really like this software. It is so powerful and so easy to fine tune and really get granular with how we we block things on the network. That's really it. It's, it's really easy. You could come in here and you could set up this internet schedule. So if I turn this on, you can see the bars that are white here, the time slots and the days. Each cell represents 15 minutes and you can see where internet access is allowed there, where it's grayed out, it is, is blocked. So I could say okay to that. So that means that between the hours of 8 a.m. and uh, 20 minus 12 is 8, 8 p.m., right? Eight, nine, yeah. Internet is allowed. Otherwise, it is blocked. You can also do time quotas where how often or how much can this computer use the internet? So if I wanted this machine to have a total of three hours and 30 minutes, I would click OK once. And you can stack this, right? So I could say between the hours of eight and eight, this computer can only use the Internet for three hours and 30 minutes. Or I can come in here and I can even get more fine grain with my days, right? So maybe on Saturday, I want this computer to be able to use the internet for five hours and 30 minutes. And maybe on Friday, I want the same thing, but on Sunday, I gotta get ready for the week again. So I'm only gonna allow one hour. You can get that granular with this. And we still have all of these other, these other options. So if you've got any questions about this, let me know down below or reach out to us. But this is how you set up this basic web filter and get in here and make it your own and do all the things. You own the device. Don't be afraid to break it. You can always start over. We do have threat intelligence, which blocks intrusions, dangerous websites, malware, social engineering, unwanted software, potentially harmful applications, and phishing. You do have to have a Google API key to do that, and then you can add exceptions to that. Over here, we can see our act our activity where we blocked. You can see the access re request here. There's the system log that tells about everything that was going on. And then you can run reports, nice looking HTML reports to see everything that's going on on your network. So that's it. If you've got any questions about this, let me know down below. All right, so that is how you set up the Synology content filtering. You can take your own liberties with how you do that. Like I said, I am a fan of being able to restrict everything and then work my way backwards with the clients or the devices. It makes it perfect in case you've got a tech savvy kid who, you know, wants to turn on, you know, Mac randomization or do whatever. So you you lay that groundwork for the entire network. And then if mom and dad need less restrictions, then, you know, little little Johnny and little Sue, then you can you can definitely do that. So if you've got any questions about this, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you need IT consulting, you can head on over to willyhow.com. If you want someone to help you set this up, we are here for you. Whether it's a small business, a home, medium business, even large business. Any type of IT consulting needs that you need, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, 
we'll get you to a vendor who can. And if you'd like to just have a conversation about this with other with other techie people or uh, maybe even non-techie people, head on over to community.willyhow.com and join the conversation. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links and all the links we just talked about. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.